Hey, it's Fan Fantasy, and we have an update for Gunner Heat PC for the month of August. For those who don't know, Gunner Heat PC is a tank sim light currently set in the 1985 Fulda Gap. And it's a great tank game if you want something that's more grounded in reality. So far, there's been quite a lot of content that has been added in the past few months. Before continuing on to highlight some of the updates, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe. Most of you who watch my videos aren't subscribers yet, so why not subscribe and join the fun? And I'm almost at my 10k goal. And so for this month's update, there are more tank variants available for the US, USSR, and the GDR. Following the trend of last month's update of older T-72 variants, we now have older variants of the M60 family and the USSR's T-64s to choose from. And so for the M60s, we have the M60A1, which came out in 62, even though we have the M60 Rise Passive. This is the original M60A1, which has no thermals, wind sensors, or laser rangefinder. And also, more importantly, there are no stabilization. But it is possible to fight in the night with the active IR night sights. The old M60s uses the master camouflage pattern, as you can see here. We also have the M60A1 AOS, which stands for Add-on Stabilizer, which is pretty straightforward in what it does. The AOS version also comes with the T142 tracks, the VSS-3A IR Illuminator Lamp Box, and the M219 Coaxial Machine Gun. Next, we have the M60 Rise Passive 77 variant, and it comes with all the upgrades that I've mentioned, but with passive night vision sights and chin armor. The earlier version has a livery called the Dual Texture Gradient Camouflage, which is pretty much the first digital camouflage used on tanks before the Canadians and the Americans adopted it into their uniforms. Unfortunately, this camouflage wasn't used for too long, and only a few units had adopted it for a limited time. Personally, I really think it's really cool, especially for the 80s. And it's good to know that this was one of the first digital camouflage used in the past. In Gunner Heat PC, this dual texture camouflage will only be available on the M60A1 Rise Passive 77 version. We also have the regular base M60A3, which came out in 1978. It has smoke launchers, the M240s, coaxial machine guns, wind sensors, and a laser rangefinder. Note that only the TTS had the thermal image night sights and not the regular M60A3s. But you can expect the M60A3 TTS to still be in service in Gunner EPC. And as for the USSR, we have five different variants of the T64s. The T64A 1974 version comes with the gill armor and a 1974 version of the hull and turret. And it has the older 2A26 main gun. And next we have the 1979 version, which has the newer 2A46 main gun with a thermal sleeve. Also has an upgraded hull and turret, as well as smoke launchers. The T6481 comes with all the upgrades from before, but on the hull you'll see rubber side skirts. And we also have the 1983 version and the 1984 that both comes with frontal glacis plates. But the 1984 version comes with a TPT K1 gun sights, which comes with laser rangefinders, just similar to the T72s. By default, most missions should have the 1983 version of the T64As, their coincidence rangefinders. And as a bonus, we also have the T64R variant, or the rebuild version, older model with the 115mm DT68 main gun. And you can tell by how naked it looks like. In Gunner Heat PC, if you do play the campaign in the event of low logistics, then there's a chance that the T64R will be available to deploy. The ammunition for this tank is unique, as it uses the 3BM5 from piecing around. As for the GDR, we have the original Ural T72, uses the Coincidence Rangefinder, which is probably a good challenge if you want to use in your missions. The T72 with the TPD K1 system has now been renamed to KBZ T72 LEM. Basically, the T72 LEM mod were East German in-house upgrades to the T72M by installing their own TBD K1 gun sights. And with the older variants that are now available in Gunner Heat PC, we also have newer ammunition types. And they also remodeled the 105mm M735 APF SDS round. Now have the M329 Armored Piercing Discarding Sabo and the M728 rounds. And you might be wondering what's the difference? Well, these rounds are much shorter and they don't have the fins on them. So if you want a really good challenge, then maybe trying out these rounds as a fun challenge. Also four new instant action missions that you can play. In the Eastern Hills, we have the late to the party, rolling the flank and cheap tricks. And all three of these missions are NATO. In the North Fields, we have Pronged Pursuit, which is a nighttime mission where you play as the Soviets pursuing a retreating NATO force. 
Another feature of this update are vehicle trenches, or also known as entrench positions. Before this, we had mounts as placeholders, but with the vehicle trenches, they now make it much more difficult to get a deadly hold shot. What's nice about the trench systems is that it will fit your tank you've selected in your customization. Here's a list of some of the missions where you'll see the new vehicle trench systems. And there are some adjustments that have been made, such as optimizing the terrain and visual effects and reducing the addition penalty for closer range hits from kinetic penetrators, such as AP rounds. Field tank protection levels have been decreased if you are hit by a heat warhead. The MERDC camo has been updated and improved, which you should see on the M60A3. And there's also a rework for day and night vision ranges for AI crews based on the optics. So along with content, there's been a bunch of visual gameplay and model fixes for tanks that you can check out. So these are some of the highlights that I want to mention for the update of August. So in summary, we got the older variants for the T-64s and M60s, and the older T-72 for the East Germans. And we also got the vehicle and trench systems. Looking at the big picture, last month we got the mission customization options, which allows us to try out different scenarios and other vehicle variants, which adds a lot of replayability as we continue to wait for more features to come. A lot of you are waiting for infantry as well as the West Germans and do know that they are coming and the devs are working hard to make sure that they get it right. And honestly, you gotta give them credit. Even as a small dev team, they've been pushing out updates at least once a month and I don't really know a lot of early access titles that do monthly updates like that. I'm saying this just to give more of a perspective on things. So guys, do wait out, be patient, enjoy the process, enjoy the game for now for what it is and the best way to support them is honestly through patreon or just giving good constructive feedback so with this update let me know your thoughts on all these things in the comments below be sure to hit that like with a sabo if you like this video and subscribe to stay up to date also join my discord if you ever want to connect stay tuned for more gonna heat pc content and as always i'll see you in my next video